Hasa. I'm David Peterson, and this is The Art of Language Invention. Episode 12, Contextual Ligatures. Here's a quick overview of the syllabary that I created for Kamikawi, a language I created uh, many, many moons ago. Looks about like this. Uh, pretty simple and straightforward phonology is very small. Uh, I wanted to create a font for it one day, and so this is what I did. I opened up my font program, I started a brand new font, I pull up the window, and what I see is basically the QWERTY keyboard in front of me. And so presented with that option, I just started assigning these syllabic uh, glyphs to letter forms. So for example, uh, the uh, if you type a K, you would get the syllable ka. If you typed a G, you'd get the syllable key. If you typed a capital K, you'd get the syllable um, uh, ko. If you typed a capital G, you'd get the syllable uh, k, and so on and so forth for the entire syllabary. Um, and you can do that for Kamakawi because, uh, as I said, its phonology is very small, and so the syllabary is very small and not very complex. But of course, if your phonology is larger than this, or your writing system is a bit more complex, you're quickly going to run out of space on your QWERTY keyboard. Uh, so uh, what do you do? How do you resolve this? The most important thing to understand when you're creating a font for a writing system that is not an alphabet is that the font you are creating is an alphabet. You can, yes, you can make your own keyboard layout if you want, but of course that can only take you so far because you have to work with a standard keyboard unless you can build your own hardware and make an, an actual physically different keyboard. You are still working with a keyboard that is expecting an alphabet and a font that is encoded like an alphabet. So when you're creating your font, you don't need to figure out, okay, how can I make the entire computer understand that this script is not an alphabet and is some sort of an Abu Gita or an Abjad or a complex script or whatever. That's not your job. Your job is to figure out how you can turn your script into an alphabet. So basically, if this is a word in Kamikawi using uh, its glyphs, um, and this is the word in a romanization system, I have to figure out how to type that the word in the romanization system, and have the font return this, the word in the syllabary. Let me introduce you to the solution to your problem, contextual ligatures. A contextual ligature is a little piece of code that's buried inside the font that tells it to take uh, two characters, for example, and return a different one if they're typed in succession. This is the little code that tells, for example, your computer to take uh, a sequence of F and L in certain fonts and return a character that is a single character with an F and L merged together. It's a single character, but it reads to the computer as if it were two characters, so that, for example, if you type the word flat and then go into your search window and type in flat, you'll actually find it, even though rather than there being those four characters F-L-A-T there, there are actually three characters, F-L ligature and A and T. Contextual ligatures have very limited applications in the uh, fonts that we use on our computer for typing things in the Roman script. Um, they weren't intended for conlang use, but we can actually bend them to our will and make them do things for our conscripts that will help to solve the problem that I've introduced to you. Okay, the first thing that you do is you open up your font editing program. In my case, I use FontLab Studio. Uh, it, it's expensive, but uh, it allows you to edit the open type features of your font, which is something that you're absolutely going to be able to have to do. Um, a free one is FontForge, which should work for Mac, Linux, and Windows, um, and it should be free. And it should allow you to edit the open type features. I've never used it, but that's what I've heard. Anyway, so first thing I'm going to do is open up my old Kamikawi font, where all of these things are very small, but as you can see, here's, here's a syllable signed to R. Uh, that one's Lee. Here's a syllable assigned to S. I think that's ha, no, 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 wait, what is that? It's some sort of H, I don't know. Anyway, there's 
capital B, which is pay, and yeah, it's all a mess. Anyway, so we're gonna fix this. What I'm gonna do is first open up a new font that I have started. It's blank. And as you can see, I've taken the two syllables that we need. This is la, and this is li, and I've ported them over. Now this is what we're going to do. You have to open the open type panel and you'll see that the first thing that's here is this, which you have to type in at the bottom, uh, language system default default semicolon, language system Latin default semicolon. It says Latin here uh, because there is not going to be a code for your conlang or conscript, obviously. So just stick in Latin, it's fine. Um, next, we have to create a feature. To do that, you start here, press the little plus button, and you're going to see this. You're going to give a name to your feature. Rlig is what I'm going to call it. It stands for required ligature. I've had a lot more luck with that than liga, which is another ligature feature. Um, I've had a lot more luck with it working in various uh, word uh, processing programs. So. There we go, aborting because of errors. Yeah, because we don't have anything in there. So now we have to create something. So it has a shorthand here, sub. I prefer to use substitute because it seems to work better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute a sequence of keystrokes with another glyph. So substitute keystroke L when followed by the keystroke A. Ah. Substitute both of those things by a new glyph, which I am going to title L A uh, K for Kamakawi syllable. Um, I'm giving it that complex a name because it's not likely that that name is ever going to be used anywhere else in Unicode. Um, this name that you're giving it, it calls it by its Unicode name. Um, and so uh, if it, as long as it doesn't hit some other Unicode character, you're fine. All right, so that's one of them. Next one, substitute. L-I by L-I-K syllable. Semicolon, you have to put the semicolon in there to close the line. Next we go to the compile button and see what it does. And it gives us all of these errors saying that there are missing glyphs, specifically these four missing glyphs. So what do I wanna do? Create them. So now that they're created, everything seems to work fine. Uh, but you'll notice that they're blank. So we need to do something to uh, put something in there for these glyphs. So first thing is that we're going to take these characters and put them to use. So this is uh, our Lee syllable. We're going to take it, yoink, and put it here. And same with this one, this is our La syllable. I'm going to put it here. Okay, so now these are the characters that are going to replace the sequences LA and LI respectively, but of course we need to have something in there for it to replace it with. So just to show you how it can work or how it will work uh, when you create uh, your word processing document, I'm going to put some really just wacky characters in there. Let's, let's see what we can throw in there. Uh, yeah. Oh, how about this? This will make it nice and obvious. Let's uh, let's open up uh, Castathon and let's just grab one of the wackiest characters I got here. Let's see. Let's take yeah. Let's take this guy. Put that in for A. And. Um, Take this guy and put it in for I. And, um, oh yeah, let's take this fella and put it in for L. All right. So this is now a miniature font. It only has five characters in it and a little bit of code, but that's all we need for right now. So I'm going to save this, export it, and install it, and then we're gonna see what it looks like when you use it on uh, any Word document, or in my case, a Pages document, because Word is a nightmare. Don't use it.
course, sometimes things don't work out as planned. And so one thing I learned that you can do if you go back and look at the open type panel is I've just taken the required ligature stuff, copied it, pasted it into another feature called the Liga and uh, put it directly afterwards. Now you have both of them that say exactly the same thing and do exactly the same thing, but for some reason, if you just do one or the other, it doesn't work. If you do both of them, it does work. All right, so whatever. So you put both of them in, generate the font, install the font, and then when you go to test it, it looks like this. Here is your open blank document. Let's make it nice and big so we can see. Here is the word Leela typed in Helvetica. Now here's what would happen if we were using my old Kamikawa font. L would be that La glyph. I would be the separate I glyph. Then there's the La glyph again. Then there's an A glyph and that would read La La. Wouldn't work. Next, we're going to go to our new font, Kamikawa Test. Type in the L, we see that funky character. Type in the I, dynamically it changes to the character we want. Type in another L, funky character. Type in the A, and dynamically it changes to the character that we want. So, highlight that text, turn it back into Helvetica. Ta-da! And of course, if you were to go here and search for Leela in your search window. So even though it is technically two syllabic glyphs, they're being treated as an alphabetic string. So that's what you have to do in order to type a syllabic script with an alphabetic font. Basically, you take the principles I just showed you here and multiply them by however many glyphs you have, however many phonemes you have. And you can do even more advanced stuff than this. This is just an intro to how the, uh, the uh, contextual ligature system that is built into fonts, just an introduction to how they work. That's it for this episode. If you have a question that you'd like for me to answer on the show, uh, leave a note in the comments or send me an email to djpquery at gmail.com. If you want to see more episodes like this one, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.